Michael Jordan. Considered by most to be the best basketball player of all time. But his road wasn't always so easy. You know, a lot of you guys know back in the late 80s, early 90s, the Detroit Pistons came up with something called the Jordan Rules, which was actually very effective for three straight years as they eliminated Jordan and the Bulls in 88, 89, and also 90. They went on to win two championships, one in uh, 1989 and one in 1990. Now, these Jordan Rules included hard fouls, stifling, suffocating defenses, uh, forcing them left, forcing them right, zone defenses, man-to-man coverage, switching out defenders, trash talking. Detroit was able to win two championships, and a big part of their success was employing those Jordan Rules. Those Jordan Rules were very effective. And it took somebody as great as Michael for a team to come up with the Jordan rules. Now, while those Jordan rules worked for three straight years, Jordan eventually overcame the Pistons in 91 and went on to win six championships in the 90s. But let's be clear. Those Jordan rules were effective. Now, the reason I bring up Michael Jordan in this video is because there's a player today that's garnering similar attention on the defensive end from pretty much every team in the league. Most teams don't have an answer at the moment. And that player's name is Steph Curry. Now, I'm not comparing Steph Curry to Michael Jordan per se. I know Michael Jordan is the greatest player of all time. I am not saying Curry is even in his league. But let's be clear. Steph Curry is the best player in the world today, in my opinion. He has the greatest impact He's the best player on the best team. He's a reigning MVP. Looks like he's about to go back to back on that. And they're the favorite to win another world championship. Now, the question is, how do you stop or even slow down to Steph Curry? What needs to be done? He's moving at a historic pace. Is there, is there anything you can do, a team, a player, individual, a coaching staff, to stop this man? My answer is yes. There's a few things you must do. Now, it's not going to be bad boy Pistons rules. You can't get away with that in today's game. You cannot get away with that in today's game. You, you, you'll be suspended a whole fucking year if you, if you foul somebody like Steph Curry with, with a Lamb Bear-like clothesline. It's not happening. My thing is this. You have to go on with a game plan with this team. You can't just run and gun with them, try to outscore them. So let's get it started. Rule number one, dream on green. You must stop Draymond Green. The Steph Curry Draymond Green is the best pick and roll since Stockton and Malone. Now, Steph Curry can hurt you from a lot of places. He can hurt you with the ball with his amazing handling. He can hurt you without the ball with his um, off-the-ball movement, moving around screens, getting wide open. Uh, he's just he, he's deadly from a lot of spots. A spot-up shooter. Off the dribble, like I said, off screens, with the ball, crossing you over, you name it. But the pick and roll with Draymond Green is what's giving the teams the most problems. To stop, to stop the pick and roll, the defender on Draymond Green must be mobile enough to be able to switch out to Steph Curry. It can't be a double to Steph, because if you double Steph, he hits Draymond. Draymond then either takes the shot himself or hits the open guy. And that's a hockey assist for Steph Curry. So rule number one, stop Draymond Green. I would put even a small forward on Draymond Green, not a traditional power forward or a center. Because if the switch happens, then that power forward or center is on the island to guard someone like, like Steph Curry. It's not happening. A small forward or even a shooting guard has a better chance. So put a small person on Steph Cur uh, Draymond Green. That's rule number one. Rule number two, you need to be... A competitor. You have to be willing to, to face Steph Curry. Step into the lines then and be ready for the challenge. You have to make Steph play defense. There's a lot of times where Steph defensive assignment is taken up by Klay Thompson. And even Iguodala, I've seen Steve Kerr do that. 
whoever Steph is supposed to guard, he should guard that person. Now, obviously, the coaching staff doesn't want Steph in foul trouble, but as an opposing player, you have to find a way to attack Steph Curry. Make him play defense. Force him to play defense. Involve him in pick and rolls. You put him in a pick and roll situation. Get the switch and make sure you attack him. Rule number three. When Golden State plays small ball, you must attack the hoop. There's a lot of times where I see the biggest man on the court will be Draymond at six foot seven, and the opposing team is shooting three point shots or long range twos, trying to outgun the Golden State Warriors, who has the best shooting backcourt in NBA history. It's not happening. They play small ball, go to the rim. End of story. Strategize. Come up with a game plan. You can't just go in there trying to score 120 points, 130 points. What's your game plan? It must be an attack from all angles. Must be more than one player. Next rule, put hands on Steph. If you are going to double team, it has to be a strong double team. You can't just show. It has to be a strong double team. And be, be um, aware that Steph is going to look for Draymond when you double team him. Because Draymond is such a great passer. And Draymond has 10 triple doubles this year, leading the NBA as a power forward. So if you do d double Steph and put hands on him, look for Draymond immediately. Immediately, because he's the guy that benefits from the Steph Curry double team. And the next rule I would say is pick Steph Curry up full court. Why? Because he's such a threat once he crosses the half court line that... If you lay off of him, he will shoot from 30, 35 feet. It's a layup to him. Pick him up at half court. Pick him up full court. Put hands on him. The next rule is trash talk a little bit. Yeah, I know it's crazy. Trash talking the MVP, the champion. You got to get in their heads. You got to have a little Gary Payton. There needs to be a psychological aspect 